guide to combos. Combos. Combos are one of the most interesting things in Yu-Gi-Oh! What separates Yu-Gi-Oh! from other card games is the freedom it allows you as a player in Yu-Gi-Oh! to do what you want. The game tells you that you have an idea. Go for it. No idea is a bad idea. Anything goes. You don't get that from any other card game. That is the game's greatest strength and weakness. It does not promote power, it's everything like other card games. For crying out loud, one of the early banned monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh's history is a really weak monster. It's quite amazing if you think about it. Now, what Yu-Gi-Oh promotes is strategy. It's not power that wins, it's simplicity. Combos continued. Since freedom is prevalent in Yu-Gi-Oh, this is what makes Yu-Gi-Oh so challenging to master. Since in Yu-Gi-Oh, if you can think it, you can do it. Anything goes in Yu-Gi-Oh, as long as it follows the rules. So honestly, start from your imagination and understanding of Yu-Gi-Oh itself that you have as a player of the game. With that said, and with me breaking your rigid mindset loose, let's start you on the path to learning combos. What is a combo? Let's use the definition that is in the Yu-Gi-Oh wiki, which is, a combo is a combination of two or more cards whose effects activate in such an order that allows the result to be different and potentially more useful than what would otherwise be normally possible. Sometimes an entire deck can be constructed around a single powerful combo. While that is the way we can say official definition, don't be locked into this narrative. Always be free to experiment. Let me give examples of typical combos, effect combos, chain combos, loop combos. One. Effect combos. These are the combos relying heavily on monster effects. Usually a combo kicks off from one monster, maybe two. These particular combos are popular, some more than others, with some combos getting popular due to one particular monster being the starter for the combo. For example, one card orchest combo can lead to a very scary board at the end of its setup. I classify them as effect combos because these combos rely, as I said earlier, on monster effects. Monster effects starts them, leads the combo, even guides it to its eventual conclusion. 2. Chain combos. Chain combos are similar to effect combos with one major difference. They rely on spells and traps as well to facilitate their start and conclusion. Some combos may start with a monster effect and end with a spell or trap or card effect. The combos have no particular guide in it or one particular effect starting it, guiding it or ending it. The combo depends on the situation at times. Mostly, it's an anti-meta playstyle philosophy. Chain combos follow previous formats, so lots of decks use this philosophy. The switch to effect combos was not overnight. It happened gradually in the phase of the link format. I do want to stress out effect combos did exist in previous formats. They just were not prevalent as they are in our current link format. Waiting when that ends. 3. New Combos These are combos that Yu-Gi-Oh has had in its history. They are infamous as they are the ones that allowed the ban list to be created in the first place. Loop combos only have one conclusion to reach the win state as quickly as possible, denying player interaction. A. Loss of life points. B. Deck destruction. C. Time wastage. This applies in the tournament setting. D. Creating an effect bubble. A. Loss of life points. Burn decks. Decks of this nature work on a simple principle. Burn your opponent with a burn effect that can be looped as many times as needed, not allowing any interaction with your opponent taking place. B. Deck Destruction This type of decks are not as common, cause in Yu-Gi-Oh these effects are not common and also consistency for these kind of decks at the moment is not the best. Maybe in the future with the introduction of a new mechanic or archetype we may see this idea explored and developed, but as of now it's nothing to write home about. C. Time wastage. This applies obviously in higher form of play in Yu-Gi-Oh. This is a strategy that has been proven to work, getting cards, the cards that do this limited or even banned 
from the game. D. Creating an effect bubble. This phenomenon, as I dub it, is when a player uses effects in their decks, not allowing player interaction, but it effectively creates an effect bubble, as I call it, also not allowing effect interaction as well, resulting in an overwhelming victory since a bubble is created within the duel where no interaction is formed and can be initiated by the opponent. FDK and OTK are the best examples of this, but most recently is when decks have so much consistency that it gets to the point that interaction is rendered null and void by the opponent. This absurd consistency creates this bubble where interaction is rendered pointless by the opponent. The main culprit of this are effects that have no activation limits. You are now one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate is in your hands. Like and subscribe. Hate and subscribe. You could decide to not subscribe at all. The choice is yours. Goodbye.